Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. Uh huh. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hey, Babe. This is Hey, Babe. We sat. So, what? So Sal is not here again. Sal, Sal's not dead, by the way. A lot of people are tweeting, is Sal dead? No, he's not dead. Because if he was dead, you better believe I'd do a Patreon with his dead body. <laughs> so, so Sal is not dead. Sal's they would a, do a lot of Impractical Jokers episodes <laughs> yeah, around they a dead Sal, wouldn't they? they would fin- the Impractical Jokers would finish the season. And he, by the way, who would be the only one left? There'd be one Impractical Joker left because they're dropping like flies. Yeah, and then Murr would be the one. Yeah, Murr would kill them all. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. So, so I think that, um, uh, uh, Sal is by the way, just doing, uh, he's just got, you know, practical Joker stuff. He'll be back with us, uh, after Thanksgiving or hopefully before. So do not worry. But in the meantime, we got a good friend of the show. Good friend of mine, Neil Brennan. Yeah. Let's talk. How do I know Chrissy D? Well, let me explain. Do you guys. know me? You open for me. I did. In uh, probably 10 years ago in um, Jersey. Stress now, factory. Now, if you're thinking, Neil, a- an Italian coming off a hot Letterman set, is that really the guy you want opening for you in Jersey? In retrospect, no. <laughs> it was not the guy that I wanted open for me in Jersey. Because uh, neither one of us really knew how to kill. But I would I would say the audience liked you significantly more than they liked me. <laughs> Um, I don't have a fine, I don't have like a clear memory of it, but I remember going like fucking all right. Just every show would be like fuck. I, and I also had no draw in New Jersey, and I and I continue to just go. We don't got to do Jersey. Do you know what's wild about just like perspective and like the human brain mm-hmm. is? I remember this these exact moments as completely different. I remember you being sold out wall to wall and me saying to myself, how do I get to a point where I could sell tickets like him and you absolutely crushing? Isn't that wild? That's very funny. Isn't that wild how it's like we were both there, but we saw it through different lenses and, and, um, and yeah, that's because when you were saying, because when we first brought up, where did you meet me? I was like, wait, where did we did? And then as soon as I thought about it, I was like, oh, Jersey. And I remember it. So, and I remember you eating falafels in the green room, which I was like, you know, me being an uncultured Brooklyn boy, I was like, what's a falafel? Can I dip it in marinara <laughs> sauce? <laughs> uh, now, I'm, I haven't been on Staten Island. It's been a while. Right. Now, on Staten well, yeah. Island, do you get an Amber Alert when there's like some, some cocky blacks? around that you've run them off the island like there's some cocky blacks we get so an some amber black alert. kids <laughs> hanging out in the corner we got to get rid of them yeah <laughs> and then you guys all round up and honk your horns and and it de- italian flags it depends <laughs> if they're democrats or kanye blacks if they're, <laughs> if they're kanye blacks we accept them if they're democrats no um <laughs> kanye blacks they stay Kanye Blacks is set. Yeah, we like we yeah, yeah. we like we don't. No, we, I'm kidding. No, you know what's interesting about Staten Island? Is and it, you go like this. You guys are smart. 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 It has a vibe. A lot of people when they think Staten Island, they think, oh, um, you know, like racist, Republican, sandwiches. All these things are true. But <laughs> but where we live uh, on the North Shore of Staten Island is not like that at all. Actually, Staten Island, where I, to be fair, I'm being honest, the, where I live on Staten Island and this area we're filming the pod is some of the most culturally diverse, some of the most cultural diversity I've seen in all the five boroughs. It's I, I didn't know it existed. I moved here not for that reason. <laughs> I, I moved here. And, and when I found it, I was happy, you know, because my kids now go to these schools that are like so culturally diverse. Yeah, I saw a yoga studio not far. Dude. Yeah, couple no, blocks that, from here. It's 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 one now. Of, but you and I both know if there's another nine eleven, it gets burnt down. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, on on nine twelve, <laughs> it's burnt down the day after. By the way, any terrorists listening to the show, and we know that you are, if you want to really sabotage New York City, then you have to do two things. One, do what you did on nine eleven, knock down the buildings. But then the second move is blow up the Verrazano Bridge because all the cops and firemen live on this <laughs> island. Stuck, yeah. So you couldn't, be, you wouldn't be able to get anybody to help if you you they forget to break this bridge, the Verrazano Bridge. This is this pipeline. I do dude. love the image of a bunch of two hundred forty pound guys swimming across, <laughs> angry swimming like these. <laughs> <is, Yeah>. <laughs> 
Well, I'm coming for you, you Yeah. You fucking but, yeah, owl it, heads. It's the George Washington painting crossing the, the Delaware, but it's yeah, like Vinnie Falzone, <laughs> just a fat piece of shit. Yeah, with yeah, fucking yeah. Fire poor. But um, no, it's um, it's it's one of those, Staten Island is, is it's, I'm, I'm actually really happy to be living here. They got a lot of history here. A lot. I love history. They got a lot, a lot of history on Staten Do Island. Do they really? Dude, the Revolutionary War. Colonial history. This was the borough of Staten the Island. wasn't boroughs back then, but the island of Staten Island was the first place. This is where the British troops, the the general set, the King George III said the entire British army directly to Staten Island. He was like, if you take that, that's the colony. New York's a very important colony. Take Staten Island, we'll win the war. And then they immediately took Staten Island. In they took, by the way, as proud New York, I'm proud New York, the tough guy, Staten Island, Brooklyn. The colonial, uh, the British army took Staten Island in about. 20 minutes yeah. we just f completely laid our weapons down we're like you guys win we, we were wrong we said what we should have never said yeah. nothing and then new york was fully occupied by the british for the entirety of the war how so they get rid of them right. they 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 got rid of them the the british just left when the war ended but the for the entirety of the war for all five six years there was no it, this was c complete british people on inhabiting now are you following um uh, uh ukraine like, are you like kind of interested? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm interested. I'm interested in. I guess. No, I am, and I'm not. <laughs> what I'm. What? Because I don't believe. I don't. I just don't believe what uh, we're being told is the truth. I don't think that Ukraine is winning like the news says they're winning. I kind of don't either. But then, yeah. they, then, then Russia leaves Kyrgyzstan and these cities, and I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe. it's true. I think that I do think that yeah, in in it's it's a complicated thing I think for Americans to understand because like Ukraine, like you know, like Kiev is like that's like part of like Russian like foundation. Like they, right. this this is it's like a sacred thing that they are together to some of them to some of them right like one of them Putin Putin very old Putin yeah they really are. although what's his name uh uh, uh oh, um, Zelensky got a new jacket huh yeah Zelensky got a new Real, jacket is that a and, north face and Zelensky what am I looking is at? like not dead I mean we should be celebrating every I mean this guy everybody thought he was going to be murdered immediately and I gotta say he put on some weight though he did that's interesting, right? In a war where you're supposedly being the most sought after guy, you're getting fatter. He yeah. gets diabetes. He's now. clearly eating his feelings, <laughs> yeah, this guy. Okay. Dude, um, I, um, what's on your mind? This is a cry for help. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I just, yeah, the, 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 the Russia-Ukraine stuff, I've stopped. I, I don't really watch. I don't pay attention. Not that I don't pay attention. I think we have, a, you know, we have an obligation as comics to pay attention a little bit, but I don't try not to get sucked into it. My... Mm -hmm. my, my kind of um routine has been lately i watched the local news just okay. just the local news uh and uh NBC. are there a lot of those uh takeovers here what do you mean the tokyo drift take corner takeovers like la you watch the local news every night they're like youths have taken over the corner of bundy and and <laughs> slauson yeah. and they do like it's a bunch of it's like a hundred kids or 200 and they no. do the spinning and then one of them gets clipped no. and it's fucking fantastic no, dude for us it's er every night it's like somebody push somebody else in front of them yeah yeah, subway yeah, car. yeah 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 and then yeah, it's yeah. just so it's just like but now it's like not even tragic anymore they're just like delays on the seven you know why you know, they're, they're, like, they're, they're like, you understand it's going to be, it's a bit of a cleanup. It was this, this time, time and what yeah, happened happened. What happened, you know? And so. And there was nothing we could do. But, you know, I I, I think, I, what, why do you keep pulling this? Oh, what is this eighth grade teacher in Arizona? Her husband have lost their school jobs if they recorded OnlyFans videos in their classroom. I'm okay with that. Recording. Oh, eighth grade teacher and her husband. Oh, so they were having sex. They made a porn OnlyFans in the, ah, uh, okay. In the classroom they work at. You know where I love okay. fucking? Can't do it. While we're doing this? Yes. You know what? I love on a bed. Yeah. Just on a bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Missionary. Like, uh, yeah, missionary on a on a on a on a nice uh uh podcast mattress. <laughs> uh, on a mattress that sponsors a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. pick one. Yeah. Fuck on it. That's it. That's the way I like to if you're wondering, because I, 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 did you ever find yourself doing something that you're like, this ain't, it's not even me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm 
fuck you on a table. All right. Yeah, like it having proves s- nothing. Having sex in the shower, it's like for you're, what? You're going to slip. My dick isn't angled that way. It's stupid. I always get shampoo in my pee hole. Yeah, and it's itchy. Um, speaking of shampoo in the pee hole, let me tell you, sponsor Neil. Yeah, yeah I, well, no, they that that shampoo one. Uh, no more, no us. more tears. Unbelievable, they dropped us. Um, what's up, babe? Brand new hour of stand up material. I am in Toronto right now. We got two shows tonight at the Royal, two shows tomorrow night, Friday at the Royal, then Saturday in Buffalo. All the tickets at christycomedy.com. Then we got uh, December, uh, in mid December, 15, 16, 17. We got Charlotte, Asheville, Charleston. And then December 31st, Huntington, Long Island, the Paramount, New Year's Eve show. And uh, January 12th, 13th, and 14th, New Orleans, Dallas, Houston. Christycomedy.com for Tiki Wiki's brand new hour of stand up material. Right intention, wrong move. I love you. Neil Brennan's Netflix special, Blocks. Um, is I got to be honest, man, it's one of what you, you, here's what I think. Number one, it's, I would say on Netflix specifically, it's one of the best specials on Netflix that I've seen in the last five years, maybe more. One of the best. Two, just in general, I think what you and Ari Shafir put out back to back is like a game changing event for stand up comedy because they're both specials. I know you did it with three mics, but I mm-hmm. even though three mics was great, I think blocks is even Thank higher, you. higher level. Um, jokes are the more jokes and more jokes. jokes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as, as as vulnerable, the the level of vulnerability, the the quickness of vulnerability followed by comedy is so insanely hard to do, and you do it like really, really well. Where even Jasmine, you know, my Puerto Rican girlfriend who like doesn't know anything about comedy, she was like looking in, and she was like, "That shit was deep and funny." Like she's like Great. saying that, like you know, and she's like, listen. And then you're talking at one point about like you know how marriage isn't for everyone, and she's yeah, always yeah. being like, you need to marry me. Like it's kind of like she was in bed, like you know, like Neil had points about like let's just be <laughs> living and free. And I'm like, Neil, yes, <laughs> and, I fucking gotta have this kid on the pod. <laughs> and, uh, We're doing know, a double up. I'm yeah. putting him on Hey Babe. Yeah. Fuck. And, and so and yeah, I was like, I gotta get her, on, get him on the bigger platform. Yeah. And and so and so and behind and, the paywall. And so yeah. And so and so. So, but but it, it, what it is 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 number one. It's special. It's a special because it's genuinely special. It's not just a comic with jokes in front of a screen. Not like, doing a press conference like the like the like the like the last two specials I put out. You know, I'm proud of them, but if I. I, I wouldn't say that they're special. They're jokes that you can see in a comedy club where I'm like, but that's all I had at P- that moment. Right, yeah. But what Ari Shafir did it, I think what his special Jew that came out uh, two weeks Wait, ago. Why why you call him that? I know. it's Well, it's called Jew. I thought it was called fucking Jew, but it's called it's called Jew. And, 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 um, and, and, so, and so. The fucking silent. You know, yeah, it's that. Silent. You say yeah, it in yeah, your head, yeah, but in you don't head. put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's Dan Island. Yeah. And, and so. Yeah, we put in Jew and then Staten Island search engine is like, do you mean fucking? Seriously, and, but do you mean fucking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for nothing, but yeah. do you mean fucking? Yeah. yeah. And so and so so that was great special because it, again, it was thematic. It had a it, it 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 you know the set was designed in a way where I'm paying attention for more than the jokes. Again, vulnerable. I'm learning. His, something I haven't about watched this yet. His set looks excellent. It looked it looks amazing. Fire yeah. hazard, like you can't fucking imagine. But oh, I can it, it looked imagine. amazing. A lot of people died. But you, but 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 your uh, special was very similar in that way, where you know the set was amazing, and had you know had the blocks, and you're pulling out these blocks, and it's like all like you know these things that are in your mind, and then and then, but I was watching it for for so much more than the jokes, even though it was the, I would say it was a weird thing, like the way I could describe it is is. The emotion I felt the most, it was funny first, funny first, but I was listening, for, but the jokes were second in a weird way. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. It was overall, I would say, absolutely 95% funny, but the, but it wasn't about the jokes. It was about the telling of them. It was about the point of them. It was about where it's all going and then tying it in at the end when you said the individual thing, the individual ones of these thoughts I can manage with. It's the totality of these thoughts that causes my anxiety. I was like, wow, I never, I slowly took the gun out of my mouth <laughs> and put it down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great. So uh, well, I was first dope. of all, thank you for watching it. Yeah. Because I know just yeah. watching, it's pro- we all act like it's this huge sacrifice to watch each other. Yeah. 
but it's I I watch pretty much everybody. Right. Um, I haven't watched ours yet, so what I'm going to. But yeah. um, but I watch everybody, and so I thank I most comics don't. Yeah. Um, but I actually like comedy. Yeah. And I don't act like well, if I watch you, it'll fuck with. Me. It's like whatever. Right. It's just bullshit. It's just a way to like not uh give your friend attention. So thank you for watching it. Yeah. And uh. And and thank Jasmine for me. I mean, look, she's not going to let yeah. off with the marriage. You know, I, she's not. I but know, like, you got two weeks. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but but I appreciate you buying me time. Watch my yeah. next special is going to be me doing blocks with a yarmulke on. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to combine. <laughs> um, well, but, what do you now when you see somebody? If you, Ari's thing is thematic. Yes. My thing is thematic. Yes. Do you ever think like I should do one of those? And then how, how do you think you would, what would it, how could you do it? Well, that's what, you know, it's interesting because it's, it's, I'm in a weird place right now. I will also say you're more charismatic than me and Ari. Like you're, you're right. like, people just like, don't say right. People just <laughs> like, people was, just, I, should, I said that in my head. Yeah, I you should be like, <laughs> fucking this Jill. is how you do it. You go. Huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You think so? But in my head, I'm Starting saying obviously. Yeah, yeah, duh. <laughs> uh, duh. Um, do you get compared to Tony Hinchcliffe on every YouTube video? Because I do. Um, uh, I'm get, I'm on Rogan today. I'm going to get shellacked in the company. Trust me. For cause, she lacked. Because of Hinchcliffe lookalikes? Well, no. That's We talk about information and COVID. It's going to go pretty well for me. His yeah. fans are going to hate me. My fans are never going to hear it. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, so you're more charismatic. So I think when you do these shows, people just want to be around you. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like people just want you to go like, they want yeah. you to do the, you like Chrissy, like they want you to do Chrissy blanks. They want you to do all sure. the shit you're known for. They just want to spend time with you. It's just that I get to spend time with Chrissy that's, like, more organized than the pod, and, and like, it's fun. So in so I feel like, not like I have to do shows like this, but I feel like in order to make it as fulfilling as the guys that are just amazing, like Burr or Dave or Chris or Jim Jeffries or, like, list of Mulaney, like, list of people I'm forgetting, but Wanda, Sarah, whatever, uh, Allie. Uh, is there any demographic I haven't hit? Austin, do I, did I pronounce it right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, you. Hassan Minaj. <laughs> I say it properly. Really? Yeah, I think Minaj. you said. Uh, Hassan Minaj. Hassan Minaj. Hassan, uh, Hassan Minaj. Yeah. Um, I won't say it. I'll, I have to play Arabic. I, I play Indian music behind me when you I say to. it. Yeah, you have to. Otherwise, I said Arabic because I'm that racist. Yeah. Um, because I, it's all one thing. Um, so you don't have to do a thematic show. I'll tell you that. I I I'm not going to keep doing them if I unless I have ideas. Well, because people DM me. By the way, the amount of DMs I've gotten is like un. It's like overwhelming, which I can't believe. Like it's hundreds a day. Right, hundreds. I believe it. I believe of like, it. thank you, and like you got to keep doing this. You got like I don't have. I don't. I'm not going to force it. Right. Like and overwhelmingly positive, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Like one kid said something. Negative. Like, yeah. yeah, one kid. Like you're a pussy and whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. He was, was dead on. I was whatever. gonna say hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. Well well, I I I think that what because you said do I ever think about it? What's actually it's made me think about or like watching yours more your yours specifically is like I've been getting by a lot in my career these first 10 years on just the charisma on yeah. just like, you know, I can, you know, I, I work hard. I'm always, you know, traveling, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to write, but I'm like, there's a lot of times where I'm just like not looking at my notes and I'll have like a good set because I'm getting away with things that were given to me when I was younger because like I had a dad and my uncle that would like, you know, and they would pick me up. Uh, you know, my parents were divorced and they would pick me up to take me from my mother's house in Queens back to Staten Island. And I would sit in the car with them. It was immediately them making fun of me saying, you look gay, nice kids. And so I had to develop like quick things, charisma, like how am I going to get people to like me? Because I felt like my father and his brother, even though they love me, it's like the, the, their way of loving you was like, I'm going to make fun yeah. of you and abuse you. So I learned quickly how to like, you know, get people to like me quick or yeah. try. So, so when I think about when I watch your special, I was like, Huh. I was like, maybe it's not 
may, it's not obviously what you do. I have to find my own way, but it's like you, I'm going to have to, if I want to get to like the next level now, I'm going to have to be like, okay, so you have your gifts over here, but now you have to sit down and you have to write. And the scariest part is you have to do it by yourself. There's nobody that's going to help you. There's nobody that's going to, you can't call and talk to your friends about, do you think this, you're going to have to just figure Why it out. Why not? Because I feel like you, even though you think that you probably got like a lot of, I know for a fact that all came from within you. You wrote every word. Oh, of, nobody writes shit from, I mean, like. A hundred percent. No, no. Uh, one, this girl Casey gave me a tag. I mean, a lot of it's like, like Rock was helpful in like arguments. Right. Like Rock's the one who said like, if you were married with kids, you'd be more popular. I don't say it because I can't be like, and then Rock was like, and I was like, fuck you, Rock. By the um, way, the I won't spoil it because watch special, but the Chris Rock joke in your special with that the Netflix party was a fucking a thousand. Yeah, of, yeah and yeah. it was so good and the reason why i loved it it hit so much hard it was a great joke on its own but it came less than 30 seconds after like an insanely vulnerable part of the show that there wasn't laughter yeah a part of that like it was just deep where you almost were like neil could kill himself on stage right now that <laughs> this that could be it's like when carmichael came out and said he was gay in his hbo special i'm like yeah, neil's yeah. gonna commit suicide on the show That's somebody's what, gonna have to <laughs> yeah i mean if you really want the hits yeah uh if you want to get an overall at netflix you're gonna have to kill yourself yeah um yeah so but but I thought and again watch it you know but but but, but I don't but why don't I a lot some of those I mean none of these the vulnerable part Ridge wallet baby I love it I've been using it the thing that I love about this wallet the most is it prevents you from digital pickpocketing which I didn't even know was a thing but literally someone can come up on you and steal your credit card info if you don't have this type of Ridge wallet uh, if you don't have this type of wallet it has like this titanium stuff that blocks digital pickpocketing so thank you so much for that Ridge wallet and it's sleek and it's cute and it holds all my cards and holds my cash which I don't have any right now but it holds it right here on that strap and I I love it. And it's, uh, they got all different colors, over 30 colors, Hennessy Performance, Carbon Fiber, Burnt Titanium, has over 50,000 five-star reviews. Durable material means each, each wallet, durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. And let me tell you something, this is durable because I sit on this thing with my big fat ass all the time. And it's great. Rich Team is so confident that you'll like it. I love when companies do this because this is how you put your money where your mouth is and I love you for this. They're so confident that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and you can and send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's made with that RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, like I said. And right now, if you go to ridge.com slash hey babe, you can get the wallet. Ridge.com slash hey babe. Do it. Let me know how you liked it. Sorry. Hello, Fresh, everybody. Hola, Fresca. We love it. You know that when Sal and I are here, we talk about HelloFresh. Actually, that's why Sal couldn't make the podcast today because he's literally drowning in HelloFresh boxes because he just got a full shipment and he just couldn't even come to the pod because he's eating his way through all the new HelloFresh meals. And I'm going to eat him. So right now, if you um, go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe65 and use the code HeyBabe65, you're going to get 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe65. Use the code HeyBabe65, 65% off plus free shipping they have all different types of meals they got christmas themed meals now holiday themed meals um i it's so much cheaper it's like 25 percent cheaper um than going to the grocery store my family and i love it we learned we've been learning to cook with it um it's awesome. We got the whole family involved. HelloFresh, I personally think it's the best meal service uh, 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 plan on the market. And if you get a great discount, if you go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe65, use the code HeyBabe65, 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I'll tell you how I did the sh I had all the jokes, like just jokes. Let me know if my calves are showing uh, like this much. Yeah. Um, let me show you People the ayahuasca bracelet home. while we're here. Yeah. Guys, this, it's, everything I do as usual is sponsored by ayahuasca. Um, <laughs> there you go. We're going to talk uh, about that. The, uh, we don't need it. Um, the, it's on every other podcast. Uh, the, I had all the jokes. I wrote all the, just like the material, yeah, right. right? And then I was looking at it going like, what am I saying? Right. Like, what am I getting at? Right. And what I was getting at is like, I feel very defensive about my life choices. Right. And I feel shitty about them. Right. And I'm like constantly like, right. I was, I could have called it like self-defense that special, like right. just fucking constant, like defensive about, again, not being married is, I don't, it, 
people don't like it. They just don't like right. it. Like right. you're like committed to like famously committed to your girl, right? right. And and or, I mean, you know, most of the time. Yeah. But um, the uh, uh, yeah. The- well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell. I am. I am because I'll tell you what changed. I'll t- Well, no, it's. It, I'll you tell. Cut you. it. I don't no, want to no, no, fuck no, your life up. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what changed. I'll tell you what. What my thinking changed. It's crazy. That that this and this is like. It's funny. Like sometimes, like the way like a street guy talks to you is like, even though they they, it's not as um you know poetic as uh as as like a famous therapist or it's not as well researched. He said a guy. I won't. I won't. You know, say it him on the pod because he said he went through this. So I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. But but he was like um he was like listen he was like when you when you uh he goes you know if if a guy has a gun to your head and he's like talk to the fbi are you he's got a gun to your head he says tell me you know tell me tell me what you know or whatever like tell me the secrets you're not going to say anything you won't say anything because you're like then fucking kill me i'd rather die than be a rat don't uh, just fucking kill me i'm never going to tell you what i know i'm not a fucking rat and he says, but if I, but if the, if, if the guy, if the criminal then put the gun to your daughter's head and put the gun to your wife's head and said, I'll kill them, you're going to tell it like that. Yeah. He said, well, cheating on your spouse is putting the gun to your spouse and your kid's head. You're killing them. You're not killing you. You're killing them. So every time you think this is about you, it's not about you. It's about them. And then that thing, once, once you have a thing where you're like, oh shit, look at that. That's it's oh it's always been a it's it's about them. It's yeah. not about me. It's once you have children, it's fucking about them. Yeah. It's about your lot, li- it's about your wife, it's about all that stuff. So that That's the point that Rock was saying is like if you if the audience thinks you're like that, then they they like like they just like you more. Right. right. I think a lot of it has it's all charisma because it's like and the reason I I mentioned Mulaney in the when I, in the run in that area. Mulaney's selling more tickets now that he's not married. It's yeah. like it's he's just because he's fucking hilarious. Right. So like they like you for like the reasons. Right. They just put a bunch of stuff on you. I think you seem committed. Even if you weren't, you seem like you're truly like I'm just right, waiting for the right girl. Well, here's what's here's what I will say is definitely something that shifted in my brain is if you told me. Not everything in my life anymore is the amount of ticket sales and the comparison to peers anymore. Because if you told me, hey, you can sell this many tickets if you're single or if you just do this joke about someone and it'll go viral and then I wouldn't do it. I'd say, you know what? I'm happy the way my life is the way it is. Not like I I think a a lot about now like, like emotional money. Like I'm like, okay. I can have, you know, a million dollar, $10 million in the bank, but if that's going to cost me all this time away from the kids and all these it compromises is. I have to wait my family, the then in 30 years, I may have a lot of money in the bank, but I'll have no emotional Kevin money. Kevin Hart only sees his family at photo shoots. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so, so I'm like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to um, do that. You know, like I'm like, I'm happy the way my shit's going now at the pace it's going. And then if at some point, you know, things like really slow down. I just have confidence in myself that I'm like, I'll be able to find money. Like I'll be able to get it. I can just get it. I'll get yeah. it somehow, you know, cause I stay true to who I am and I'll get it. But I, ha- I, the time with my family is the thing that you won't get back the money. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the, and it, tickets, you'll always find a way to sell them. You can, you, you will figure radio. it out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You get on the radio, you'll do something, yeah. you know, but I'm like, I'm like, but, but, but so, so with, with your special, you know, I thought too, there was a lot of just fucking great points that like, it's like, you know, when they say, oh, don't make a joke about, uh, you know, it's very hack to make a joke about like Asians are bad drivers, but yeah. then like on a special five years ago, Bill Burr did an Asians are bad drivers joke. And it was like a mind blowing fucking joke. Cause he's talking about Tokyo drift and he's just does it. If you're going to do it, you got to do it like the best one you've seen. I feel like you know, a lot of people talk about like Republicans and Democrats and all the politics stuff, but your stuff was so like, like the Republican joke. I'm not going to spoil it, but the Republican joke where you about the NRA, yeah. about how like we, you know, like, like Republicans think that they, they're, they're hoarding weapons thinking that they're going to yeah. take on the government. So at like point. that bit, I was like, it's, it was so good where I was like, yeah, it actually in a way, like even subtly changes my mindset on like, 
hmm, maybe Republicans aren't right about everything. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> 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 you know, where I was like, oh, it's, it's that deep. Or you're like, oh, you look at, now you look at, I'm like, hmm, look at that, look at that a little differently now. And I was like, interesting. Like, I want my boys to watch it, but I'm going to have to tell oh. my boys, <laughs> I'm going to have to tell my boys, listen to what this woman has to say. No, yeah, yeah no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if, if I tell them you're a guy, they'll be like, I can't do it. He's a fucking, <laughs> like, I don't even know what the fuck but, he's but I'm saying. Like, I'm I like, can't fucking hear this queer. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear this queer merch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, I was like, that, that, that was, that's what was cool about it. I was like, oh, this is like mind change. This is like, um, uh, this could be like, you're going to change some people's minds on stuff. Who watch it? Well, that, I, the, with that, that joke well that joke here the the so that joke yeah i don't want to give away punch it's a joke about the and like whatever how the nra how the nra thinks that they could take on the government right they could take on the military right and that's a and, great bit on and it's that, a good yeah. bit yeah it's good act out. it's a good act out. Uh, better act outs than you think based yeah. on this flat affect yeah, yeah um i know i noticed that too by the way was like somebody's been going to fucking act out yeah school. fucking act this guy <laughs> said, <laughs> took that that dancing class took off yeah um the uh <laughs> the, uh i danced twice um uh but what you liked it because one of them was making fun of blacks so you like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was like, you could maybe, do five more push-ups. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, if you edit it differently for your friends, like ease them into some of the queer areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So open with me, to, you know, slide, whatever. Anyhow, uh, that NRA joke, I called uh, uh, Dave and I was like, hey, has someone done this joke? And he goes, you pitched me that joke in 1993. Wow. I've been sitting on that fucking premise for 30 years holy literally because i was like i would just think it every time they would say like we need in case the government and it's like yeah d- dummies they you fucking bought them better weapons yeah you pay taxes to arm them <laughs> yeah to you arm our own army. morons <laughs> yeah yeah, um, you're not going to get them with a fucking ski yeah, shooter. Yeah, with your fucking, uh, do you have an AK? Wow, an AR-15, what? Yeah. Um, they're going to get fucking smoked. Yeah. Anyhow. No, I, I, I you know, I, I was like, because that's. Unless the, you're willing to live in a cave. Right. Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Vietnam, it was a tie. It was a tie. They tied us. Yeah. Because they were willing to live in a cave for a decade. Yeah, cave. Yeah, we, we're not good at finding cave dwelling people. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, look, you want to live. Yeah, we can't beat you. I, I, you know, I feel like, um, too, like, like with, um, with, with all that stuff, when I was watching it, just from a comics point of view, I was like, how the fuck do you even work that kind of special out? Because it's so much of it has got to, you know, like, like the stuff behind you is a, so much a part of the show and you're wondering where it's going to tie in and then all ties in, in the end beautifully. But I was like, well, do you just work that out? Like in, in the, when I did it in, um, I did it on the road this like summer you without the blocks set with you the, no. without the blocks yeah no uh Those and index cards at the irvine improv <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh they and i would just do it without it i would close i would basically close with the chris joke okay like the because it would crush oh my god dude. it was cr- i even in the netflix when i say the last word in the joke about chris yeah the audience is too loud. They're yelling before I'm done. Right. Still. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris I, doesn't care. He likes it's fucking good. Job. It's like a clean hit. It's a good he job. He popped me, I pop him back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was doing the joke before Will Smith, though. That's interesting. The yeah. Well, uh, that that's I didn't want to ask you that because yeah, yeah, yeah. that gives away punchlines because yeah, yeah. you brought it up. That's fucking wild. So you literally, it was almost like Jesus I had himself. It. I like, had the joke. Yeah. And he got the he got the takedown. Yeah, in the show. Later on, I would call back and call him an asshole. Right. But and that would work. But like he got the joke, and he there was a point where he was getting the biggest laugh in the show. Right. Which I was like, this cannot stand, dude. And then when you when you talked about the there's a part where you like you know you, you get personal when you say I didn't know this. I actually never knew this. It, it that you were one of ten children. Yeah. Where it's like, dude, thank life is so much about timing because today one thousand percent you're not you're not making it. No, no, dude. The fir- your three oldest are making it, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. I don't even know if Kevin would have made it. Kevin's Kevin's top three. Oh, Kevin would have made it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, <laughs> Kevin. Uh, yeah, I, 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 interesting. But I was like, wow, dude, to be one of ten, 
that's like an unheard of growing up being one of 10 it's just like yeah man you must have had to fight for fucking identity and love every Dude, second and of the day and, but the i cut it out but my parents my dad's one of 13 wow. my dad's actually one of 14 my dad was a twin his twin died Jesus. when they were kids and before that his mom was super proud of the twin her twins yeah and then one of the twins died so that was her she thought god was punishing her for being prideful so therefore she was never proud of anything again for as long as she lived real fucking irish depression I, shit this see, is the 30s dude so many the irish were the original puerto ricans do you want to i say it we're oh, the white it. puerto ricans <laughs> yeah yeah we're, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're white puerto ricans yeah the, you want to know how crazy irish people are and i cut this out of the show and you're gonna love this I'm gonna. I can't set this up enough. You're gonna love it. You're really gonna. I love when people go like. You're really gonna like the story. <laughs> Take it. Easy. Let me decide. <laughs> um, uh, the Irish during World War II, neutral. Yes. Couldn't call it. Yeah. They just couldn't figure yep. out like which. We don't know. You know. Yes, he's he's exterminating <laughs> people, but he's also bombing yep. London. So this yep. is a mixed bag for us. Yeah. No. I, I, New, J, uh, uh, FDR and Churchill were like. What the fuck is wrong with you? And they were like, we don't know. Something, though. Something's yeah. definitely wrong with us. Yeah. They wrote Germany a letter of condolence when Hitler popped himself. Yeah. That's how crazy the Irish are. They said. And it was all about, because they hate England, they were like, well, fuck you. Yeah, we're sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we're sorry for your loss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, you're the great fear. Yeah. No, it, it's, yeah. I Dude, I almost, I almost got into a... I don't want to say cancelable level uh, thing last week, but I was in a, I did a, I, I was at shows in Boston, mm -hmm. a show in Boston last week. And the night before I was like, I just want to run around, do some bar shows, work on some Where'd shit. You, what show, where did you do? I, so last week in Boston, I did comics come home, which oh, is at, great. you know, TD Garden. And so yeah, it was yeah. like, you know, it was one of like yeah. 10 guys on the lineup. So I was there the night before and I said, you know what? Let me just run the set for it. Like, yeah. let me just fucking whatever. And I did like three or four shows. And then the last show was like, you know, 1230 in like Boston somewhere, some like basement bar show, like whatever. So I drop in. And there was like a, a Japanese and white kid, like half Japanese, half white in the front row, diesel kid or whatever. And I started, you know, doing a little crowd work as end of the night, whatever. And then he, he said, I forgot what he said. I forgot what I said. He said, but he said something like he said to me, oh, yeah, just like a, a white guy picking on my race. And I said, hold on, wait a second. Oh, he said, just like a white guy being racist, picking on my race. And I said, wait, hold on, wait a second, wait a second. I said, do you know your, do you know history like at all? Because we were talking a lot about history. He goes, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, I know, I know, because he thought I was like full German. He goes, yeah, I know you guys were the bad guys in World War II. I said, didn't you say in the beginning of this set when I asked you what you were that your mom was Japanese? And he was like, yeah. I was like, do you know how disgusting Japan was in World War II? Right. I was like, what did he good? Did you get him, make him bring up rape of Nan King on his yeah. phone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like that. And I was like, my mom was Irish. I said, so really you, your race is only the vagina you come out of. I was like, so I came out of a beautiful Irish scone vagina that was fucking neutral in World War II. Like we didn't soda do anything. bread. I like said, Irish soda bread. Yeah, of a pussy. I said, you came yes. out of a vagina that was bayonetting Chinese babies. Yeah. In Nanjing. And then doing experiments. Yeah, I was like, but white people are, we're the bad guys. I was like, you suck. I was like, and I'll tell your ancestors they suck. And it's somehow in fucking liberal ass, like college kid Boston, I got people clapping, which as a comic makes you feel gross. I'm like, no, no, don't, please don't clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need a bit. I need a joke. I need, I need material. Don't, don't, please don't. That makes me feel fucking disgusting. But then I was on stage at TD Garden. I was like, should I bring up Rape and Nan King? <laughs> should I, <laughs> Is that I, a bit? 19,000 white people. I wonder if they'll clap at this. But, but, um, but yeah, no, that, that history, I brought it up because, yeah, that fucking Irish part of uh, being neutral in history is, uh, it, it's very interesting because, yeah, they're just and neutral people in general. There's more here that's interesting. Okay, here we go. Irish pimp just found this. How are Irish soldiers treated after World War II? You would think that after fighting Hitler's armies that returning ex-servicemen would have got a hero's welcome home, but they didn't. Instead, they came back to a country that was scornful ignorant of and indifferent about what they had been through. In many cases, they faced open hostility. Irish soldiers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because some Irish did fight with, like the Northern Irish fought with. There Britain. was a thing last week on NPR about the black soldiers in America. Yeah. They would, 
Nazi POWs were treated better than black American soldiers. Yeah. Just awful shit. Like, yeah. look, if you're Googling, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. knock yourself out. Um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, but so, so yeah, Irish people are insane. And then my mom's uh, one of four, and her mom died when she was an infant. And then her and her sisters got, they didn't even think guys could raise kids back right. then. So her dad was just like, oh, I'm single again. He had four daughters, but once the mom died, the mom before she died, like pawned her daughters off to her sisters. Right. Like it didn't. And then the dad didn't even, he was like done. Right. And then he started a new family with a new wife and like so my mom and her sisters were all split up one got sent to ireland like just crazy and couldn't come back because of hitler's blockade yes yeah, so see this is what i'm saying like it's been in your dna to be like uh, you just have to do comedy you have to do something to fucking express yourself because everywhere you look in your life there's people just being like yeah i don't love you so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. and i don't even know how i don't so how like you what are yourself? you talking about yeah, yeah like what are you I one time said something to my mom about having uh, like empathy for herself, and she might as well go and gone like, "What the fuck are you talking about right. on my phone? Why right. are you calling me, saying this bullshit? Like they don't even have a vocabulary for it. It like didn't exist. Right. There was really no like parents weren't really like nice until the late nineties. Right. Like the parents didn't really have to be nice. Maybe early nineties they had to be nice, but like before that they just had to be like. Yeah. Effective. I, yeah, I just keep you alive, and I'm yeah. a disciplinarian, and I'll hit you, and you just have to listen to me. Like, it was all about, parenting used to all be about, you don't make me look bad, you're a representation of me, where now it's kind of like, we're a team, you, yeah. you know? And do you feel like it's better? I feel like, what I do feel like in some ways is the type of parenting that Jasmine and I do, where, like, we definitely, you know, dis have to discipline them, but obviously would never hit Really, I mean, send them to their rooms don't work because they just have some fucking iPad that we don't even yeah. know about that they just then watch in the room. Or, yep. you know, her brother will, they, they'll just like find that a way they to got with their influencing money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's, a, it's a business decision now. They have a TikTok because it, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. provides. I mean, we wanted yeah. a new pool. So, so um, no, but I do think that what I, I don't know for sure, but it feels like my da our daughter will tell us more uh, will be open with us more about things because she's less fearful of like, if I say anything to my mom or dad, they're going to scream at me or hit me because we don't really do that with them. So we're the hope is that as she gets older and there needs that, there there will be a, come a time where like she's going to need to say something important to us that she would have otherwise be scared to. She can tell us and we can all get through it together. You know what I mean? And you like it. You really like being a dad, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I, feel I. By the way, I don't know anyone who does it. Like, I every yeah. guy I know who's done it, who didn't, who was kind of indifferent or like, no, 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 loves it. it. You know why I love it? Because it makes me, because there's so many problems in the world. There's so many things that the human mind can just consume and be like, oh, this, that. For me, it's literally everything in my life is okay, including if something negative was happening to me, as long as I have my daughter loves me and my and my and my kids are like daddy like we love you and they're safe and happy and healthy then literally everything else is like i can tolerate it I what if they're it. attacking you on twitter if right well <laughs> once that happens once that well here's well the good news is um uh, i i've removed myself from social media so i i let i let venetia take oh, venetia takes all the abuse now so i let her yes which is yeah she's slowly losing her hair i was wondering uh, why she was smoking menthols when i got <laughs> yeah, here yeah 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 so <laughs> So, so, um, um, but yeah, if she's, if, if my daughter's, well, the thing is, if my daughter does start attacking me on Twitter and she's above 18 and she's going to get fucking roasted like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, she's a big girl and no, but it, it is, it is, it is this thing that it kind of, um, it kind of like, uh, saves me from like, especially our business or really anything like in the world where I'm just like, I care to a point I care. I, it, 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 it doesn't floor me with depression and anxiety anymore because i'm like well even if there's a nuclear apocalypse i'm like well if i'm gonna 
I got a 40-day supply, I swear to God, we talked about it on the pot, I got a 40-day supply of fettuccine Alfredo that you just mix it with hose water, which we should have still, even if there's new You'll be pot. like, a, you'll, be, you'll, you'll scarf that shit down probably 15 days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easily 15 <laughs> days. And I was like, as long as, as long as I'm with them, then that's all, that's all that matters. Because everything else is kind of like irrelevant, where I'm like, yeah, but like this connection that I have with the kids, because the thing is with children is you don't choose them. They're given to you. You know, you choose a partner, right. even subconsciously you might. But the children, it's like I had no choice in why I was given this one. I'm just given this one. So it's like, it's you, okay. very Okay, so you spiritual. think of it that way. Yeah, I, don't, I had no, that's the only people in your life that I believe I had no choice. You have no choice in family. So to me, there's something very powerful and spiritual in that. that but I, th I think daughter or son is a seems to be the highest level of connection and or spiritual connection because there's a narcissistic quality involved in it i think because it is a piece of you it's your dna and right. you and you are always going to think about us first no matter how much the pope will think about himself first you know it's at subconscious levels and different it's just so i think i'm like oh i take that in because there's the narcissist but there's also parts of her that are not you or what's your what's your girl's name again? Jasmine. Jasmine. Not you or Jasmine. Jasmine. Shout out Jasmine. Shout out Jasmine. Thank you. I think you're really yeah. My a lot of my takes yeah. on marriage were you know pretty good. Yeah. Um, you're probably on the spin bike well, watching this. Yeah. Um, the uh, the the spin bike. It's called Soul Cycle or it's called Pen Peloton. Don't be this. I didn't want to write you up for the old for the '90s vernacular. Yeah. Spin. What do you call it? The spin cycle. The spin bike. The spin bike. And you said diesel, which I gotta think people don't say anymore. Like what diesel? Like you said the kid was diesel, which oh, I diesel. gotta think. Dude, Staten Island. I'm telling you, we're about 15 years behind. Okay, me. great. Yeah. <laughs> um, those yo, no, those shoes are mint. <laughs> no, genuinely, the colors. I would yeah, yeah, literally mint. Yeah. Um, the uh, the. <laughs> but all right so aren't there parts of you it's you there are parts that are you and jasmine yes and then there's parts that are not you or jasmine 100%. right and is that the part i have a th working theory right now that there's like our eternal spirit mm -hmm. and then we're dipped in the family stuff mm -hmm. so it becomes like 30 30 30 right 30 30 percent just like eternal you 30% mom, 30% dad. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I think that that's 100% entirely possible because there are as much as our, both my kids are like us, there, there's a lot of parts, you're right, that's like, that's an individual characteristic, who knows where that came from, but still, I do feel like, well, for whatever reason, my, our souls have been put in charge of this soul, so yeah. there, there's something connected that I just don't understand, that I'm like, you know, other people change, like, people change in life, like, your friend when you were 10 may not be your friend when you're 30, because you genuinely have different brain chemistry from 10 to 30, so you may be actually different people, like, yeah. from a scientific level you might yeah. be a different person where my children i'm like even scientifically as my brain chemistry changes and so does theirs there's a spiritual connection this soul connection that i i just don't ever see how it's it's like an unbreakable bond that but guys it's no secret that women love beards and no i am not anyone's beard we love growing them we love having them. We love scratching them. I've been trying to grow my beard out a little bit, you see, but this is all I can grow. But I'm telling you, it's going to get longer. Don't you worry about it. I And when it gets long enough, Beard Club's going to help me. Right now, if you go to beardclub.com slash heybabe and you take that beard quiz, you're going to use my code heybabe at checkout. They will recommend a grooming kit that's tailored to your beard's needs. They got the PT45 trimmer. It's truly a beard-changing device. They got the growth kit, which features spray to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair. That's what I need, the growth kit. Features spray to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair, oils, the prime follicles for optimal growth, and a derma roller that rejuvenates dormant hair follicles. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. Beard Club, over 2 million beards served. Beardclub.com slash hey babe. Use the code hey babe. 20% off your first order. I'm going to get that growth kit. I can't wait to get it. But I, but what's funny to bring up the parent stuff, it seems like our parents, or certainly my parents, had no understanding of that. Right. Or even care. Like, right. it's kind of like, what? Why would I spirit? What? Right. Eternal. What you, I'm half you and have it like, yeah. Do you think your parents had any of that? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. I'm assuming <laughs> yeah. your dad didn't, but. 
No, he was shitting on your kids. No, you know what? You know what? Interesting. I think both my parents love me the same. I don't. I'm not talking about love. I'm talking about the this Chrissy was given to us, right? And we're this is we're in charge of this soul and shit like that, right? Um, huh. I don't know because my dad gave me a note that he wrote. I was born August 26, 1984, that he wrote in the hospital August 26, 1984, that he gave to me when I was 25, that he literally, the same piece of paper that he had saved in boxes, through moves, through different pairs of Jail, pa- he had to jail, cheek, yeah. he had to cheek it. Yeah, yeah, it had, it had residue on it, brown residue, and and blood, and, and, and then it was a It was note. like from the Civil War, but it was his ass. It was his ass, baby. <laughs> It was a note that kind of talked about his gambling addiction and all the demons that he had. And he was like, you know, you're saving me. I just want you to know if, if I die or, if you know, things are not going good with your mother and I, if, if I'm not in your life at some point, I just hope you get to read this letter and know that, like, it, for whatever it means, you're saving me right now. Your little body that you, he was like, I don't even know you, but I promise you, you're saving me. And, I, and then he, held, he kept this for 25 years. And then I swear to Christ, I might have said this on pod before, but I swear to Christ, he gave it to me and I lost it in one week. Aww. Great. I lost the letter. Great. But I did take a picture of it on my phone to text my mom to be like, mom, do you think this is dad's handwriting or is this just another fucking scheme? And then so you have a you oh, have, have a, a, I have a picture of the letter that I text right. my mom, but I uh, the actual letter that he for 25 years. But it just goes to show. And you know what? I uh, my dad was not even mad to find out about because you know what he said? He goes, oh, yeah, he goes, because it wasn't your responsibility. It was mine. He was like, you, you, you read it once and lit it on fire because did you save him from my, all the scaling? It like he stopped. It- yeah, he stopped. He stopped for the most part. Part. Yeah, he. I never knew my father to ever be in trouble or gamble or 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 you know not 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 when I was a kid at least no. And he was a very active father, always in my life. Divorced from my mom, never made an excuse on why he, he was just always like, yeah, I'm there. I'll just be there. Um. So I think my love for my kids comes from my dad. My mother loves me a lot too, but my dad had to like you know my dad was like, I got to take a train and a ferry and two buses to come see and all the shit like the nine eleven shit and like. <clears throat> do you are you like do you think of that what you consider like embarrassing or maybe like not the best move are you a hundred percent with him on it like <clears throat> like like you mean like what like 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 threatening teachers and all that shit i think that he's got i think that he all he saw was i love my kid i think yeah. that's all he saw was so i think that his, his way about things maybe i would say like my new hour of materials called right intention wrong move because i feel like that's what my dad that's how i describe my father right intention wrong move yeah so i'm like i'm like um uh you know he always the intention was always good it was always like i love i love your mom even though we're divorced i love you even though you're making mistakes and i just love the idea of being your father but then the moves to kind of you know deal with situations maybe weren't right what mistakes were you making when i was oh i mean you know i mean trouble on that 9-11 thing you know getting into a fight um you know uh, uh look we were it was an emotional time it was i know but you know still like <laughs> fighting you know not listening to my mom like my dad only hit me once in his whole life he only hit me once in his whole life because he was i, I was not being kind to my mom i was right. 13 14 year old raging teenager and my mom you know was like you know asking simple things clean your room you know fucking you know don't bite the dog you know don't <laughs> piss don't piss in the hamper How? Like you I, bit the dog. Yeah, I, would, I was like an asshole of a child. You had like ADD and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, you had yeah, the yeah. full. But in in, in the late eight, in the uh, late nineties, it was like not as science. Like I went on Ridley. We didn't have science till like two thousand nine. Dude, I know. <laughs> we didn't have science till Doctor Fauci, <laughs> the pandemic, and and so and so and so and so I you know that it wasn't like the or it wasn't in therapy like I remember like you know occupational therapy like I still hold a pen like an asshole because I went to Catholic school so they would just be like oh you'll pray you'll you know just pray that God will hold the pen correctly for you and it's like no I'm I'm holding the pen like I have fucking lobster claws and it's embarrassing in public when every to this day I just signed in at an equinox in Boston and they were like you hold the pen like that that's you hold the pen weird I'm like yeah sister all Mary never that's Boston me. though so they're gonna shit on whoever <laughs> yeah yeah they're like you uh, see how it holds the fucking pen they're like you hold the pen like a fucking yankees fan <laughs> it's like what all right um so um so but but my i was being a, a you know a, a brutish team where would you bite the dog 
you know, just on its fucking legs. Like I would just grab it and bite it and make it cry. And you really, know, yeah, I swear, because it would bite me. I'd bite it back, or I'd like, you know, I, I, I peeing in the hampers, not listening to my mom. Hampers, you know, uh, hampers. Yeah, I would fucking, multiple. Yeah, like you know, like the, the the delivery guy would come. You know, I'd I'd fucking answer the door, fucking butt naked, and like you know, like <laughs> do shit, like you know, push steal his bike, like being just stupid. And then and then I called my mom a bitch one day. Like a, like a, at an, like, cause I, I don't remember what it was, but I call my mom a bitch and my mom told my dad and then my dad, uh, came over like, you know, a couple of days later and he was like, uh, you know, he's like, Hey, he's like, uh, what's going on? I was like, you know, not the, whatever I was, I probably, you know, yeah. I, at that point, I swear to God, I swear to Christ at that point in my life, I had my hair in corn rolls. I had fully corn rolled hair and I was just like, <laughs> you know, what's up with you? Like that, you know, like that's how I was. And I was like, you know, answer the door, you know, no shirt. Were you, were you hanging out with black dudes or you were yeah, doing this with ba- Italians? Yeah, I was basketball team. So it's like, you know, oh, what right, I thought yeah. I needed to do to be the white kid to fit in. It's just yeah. what I thought. I, I knew you that. It turns out you don't got to do anything. You, no, you don't have to do anything. No, no, because literally, no matter how, no matter how much I wanted to present myself as a black person, they still only ever called me Dirk Nowitzki or Mayonnaise. That's yeah. all they call me. So it's like, you're not ever, you will never be one of us. No. So I was just like, fine. But, but I, at least I got, I saved my myself from getting made fun of because I could shoot jump shots and at least I could I could fit in on the basketball team so that was my way to like fit in but so and I have you know took it too far like most teenagers do we're idiots so so my dad uh says to me he goes all right he goes um he goes what what happened with uh, your mom the other day and I was like oh. can I get back to the the corn roast thing yes I like you still call them rolls yeah. corn rolls yeah because I'm used to spinach roll, pepperoni roll, like so yeah, it's corn no, roll. Yeah, it's something no. I can. I have Look, to. I have to make goes, everything pizzeria friendly for me. Yeah, it goes well. <laughs> yes. Um, I like when you're the when you're doing that. You're in that part of your life when there's, but there are certain white guys that you'll still be like, he's cool. You're yeah. like, you'll only like publicly like black guys, right? But then every once in a while, you'd be like, as a white. He's he's all right. He's decent. Yeah. For a white. They always play um when they go, What music should we play for you when I go on? And I go, anything but Eminem. Yeah. Because that's their first move. Right. Is like, well, he's if he's associate I associate him with black people. Yeah. So of course Eminem. Yeah. And it's so fucking embarrassing. Yeah, you don't. Where you're like, I don't you please, any yeah, I'm begging you not to play Eminem. <laughs> play Eminem. Yeah, I come out to Whitney Houston exclusively. Well, of course, it's just a fucking you never you never see that coming. Did you see the uh, the biopic yeah. trailer? Oh yeah, I uh, I think it looks great. Do you not like it? There's a Snoop biopic that they just announced. Now here's my issue. Okay, you know if you make a Snoop biopic, you know who's not in it? Snoop. Snoop. Right. They it should they used to make Muhammad Ali biopics and they would just put him in it. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. They would just put him in it. Yeah. Which I think they should do for Snoop. I right. really believe that. <laughs> right. Just put him like he yeah. could do CG do something to make him cuz I don't need the NWA version cuz Dre's like Diesel to use your Thank you. uh word. Cock Diesel. Uh, yeah, yeah Cock Diesel we're going for the full yeah. the full German. Yes. Um, the, so I think they should just use the real Snoop same, by the way, same weight. He's the same weight. He hasn't gained guy. Can't put a fucking pound, pound on. on. Yeah. You're the, you're the Snoop dog of white guys. <laughs> you're our Snoop. You literally are the Snoop of white comics. Very similar, dude. We, we've been in it for a long time, man. Yeah, Snoop. You've been, yo, seriously in the game for a long time. But well, let me just, let me just wrap up my dance group because it, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I get, that's right. Intention, wrong move, but might be right. Intention, right. Move. I like that as a premise for the show, by the way. Yeah. Ma- yeah. Yeah. I, I got to see like it. as the, what you don't even need to, I just think anything is like a recurring thing is like oh, better no, no, than no, just you know, talking. Be prepared for me to be calling you weekly to try to get this one show down. <laughs> Um, and so and you're not even rolling here, right? No, 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 this is lit. No, dude, we can't talk about this shit on. Hey, babe, no. they don't, fans don't care about this. This is for me, man. Um, so, 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 but my dad, he goes, Oh, what'd you say to your mother? And I was like, I was like, Oh, I called her a bitch. And he goes, why'd you say that? I was like, cause she was acting like a bitch. And then he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah. And then he just punched me in the face, like out of nowhere, like, like fist, fist, like, a, like cheek. I was 14, like punch me in the face. Jaw cheek. Yeah. Uh, hit me like in the cheek, like punch, like where I like fell into the wall, like literally like into the wall, like, like was like, 
stunned, like did not ever in a million years, but my heart was like racing. I'm sure. And, he, and then he grabbed me, he grabbed me and he gave, I knew he gave me like a kiss on the forehead. He goes, here's the thing. He goes, I'm sorry I had to do that. He goes, but you call a woman a bitch. You think you're a man. He goes, being punched in the face. That's what happens to men. If they call a woman a bitch, they get punched in the face. He goes, are you a man? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not a man. He goes, exactly. He goes, and a real man would never call a woman a bitch. He goes, so you apologize to your mother. Put some ice on your cheek. You're going to be fine. He goes, don't ever make me have to do that again. You made me have to do that. And I was like, wow. And it was like a fundamental change where I was like, yeah, you know what? Who the fuck do you think you are, Chrissy? And then I swear to Christ, the very, and I, this is why I remember this, the very next day. The weird day, thing is you called your mom ma'am for the <laughs> next four years, <laughs> yeah. which I think was no, a little remember, bit of an overcorrection. I, I remember because like the very next morning I woke up and I just like looked in the mirror and I was like, let me slowly take out my cornrows. And I slowly took them out and I was like, let me wash my hair. And I was like, still like carried myself the same way, but I was like, I'm being someone. Let me stop I'm, wearing double XL everything. Yeah. I was like, there's, I'm, I'm not the guy. You know I what? I'm going to buy a belt. Yeah. Cause you, yeah. You know what it is? It's like, Chris, you can't have cornrows, wear FUBU, call your mom a bitch and also have psoriasis. It does. One of these things is not like the other. You know, you have, you have, you're, you're borderline asthmatic. You know, you're scared of the dark. You Would you talk to that? You wouldn't talk to your basketball teammates about this much. Your psoriasis and your <laughs> no. fear of the dark. No, no. Yeah, there no. weren't huge black talking points for you. <laughs> no, no, they, 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 didn't, they didn't want to hear about that. Yeah, um, but yeah, so it's one of those things where yeah, may, maybe maybe that is maybe maybe that's my thing. Right intention, wrong move. Maybe there's something there. I don't know. Well, no, it is, that's a good it's a good angle for like you could call it back five times. Like, you know what? The one thing too. The one thing too about 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 your show and it's just like a life thing too is what i what i got from it is bro to get to the level of the stuff you were talking about it's the thing that i think i subconsciously do not want to do is it's very very scary to get to the level of you know when you get vulnerable and even to find some of those punchlines it's like yo you gotta really kind of look at yourself in the mirror and be like this is who i am and this is what i'm about and then make material about it and i think sometimes i personally stop because i'm like wait i don't want to ask actually face the fact that da 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 because you I, could but you i'll say this you have opened up a small lane for yourself because your anxiety is kind of fun right like i got anxiety, like you you know but by the way i was very excited to just be on staten island to see where i'd watch so many instagram stories from yes uh <laughs> Yes. It's a huge, huge deal. Yes. Um, the streets, you know, where they made these the great Instagram IG lives. Yeah. And some of the stories and um, yes. Chrissy Chaos, Chrissy yes. Anxiety Tuesday, whatever. Yeah. This is, but if you came here 10 years ago, it was, there were no cameras. It was just Sal giving Q wedgies yeah. just on the, I on believe the street. It. it was just, it was Pete, you know, with no tattoos yet. No, yeah, no, they were just walking around um, with Crohn's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just uh, trying to trying to trying to get information about Crohn's. He yeah, couldn't yeah. get. You couldn't get it. Yeah, it was Vinny yeah. Guadagnino just worked in a supermarket. Yeah. You know, like it was it was um, before we had so, anything. But you have opened <laughs> up a small, like you are. You've made anxiety like a silly thing. Yeah. But even the fact that you talked about it and people responded to it, it's because they also have anxiety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone has something. Yeah. So. That's what I realized in terms of like with three mics and with this one, I people are like, aren't you embarrassed? I'm like, no, I, I know what happens. Right. I say I say it and I get deluged with people saying it back. So it's like I just go first. Right. And then everybody which I'm sure you thought you probably accidentally said something about anxiety. Yeah. And then realized like and then ten people were like, dude, fucking yeah. I have it too. And then you realize like we're all in this club that we don't all think we're in. Yeah. But you, you've done it. You can like, what premise of mine did you think I wouldn't talk about that? Um, that what I wouldn't talk about. Well, I, the only thing that not, not that I, not specifically, but I'm just saying like where you were like, fuck, I don't, that's a, cause I don't even know what you mean. The, the vulnerable stuff. I understand like the stuff about like, I don't want to get married because I don't want to, or I don't want to have a kid because I don't want to yeah. maybe not love it. Like that's, there's no punchlines there. Well, I God. think, I think, I think like when I, I, what I meant was like, 
you know, you have material about like your dad, like genuinely like not loving you. Yeah. And it's like, there was, it was like, it was like, oh shit, you had to face that. You had to face that head on and get right bits about it where it's like, that's hard because there might be things where like, there might be that there, because, because my mom would always say, you know, I like things like that. I, I didn't ever even uh, knew that she reminds me of. She's like, you know, you know, you, she was like, you know, Chris, you used to, uh, well, I was like, oh, where do you think my sense of humor came from? She's like, well, I noticed when you were a child, like five, six years old, every time your father would call to check in on you, you know, every night he'd check in on, on you, you know, he'd call from Staten Island. We were ho- here home in Queens, Brooklyn. She, you know, you'd be hysterical. A long crying. distance call back then. Oh, I know. <laughs> Big time. Of course, he from a payphone, And he was, he was like, you'd always cry. You'd always start to hysterical cry because you missed your dad so much. And then what you would do is he was just like, I got to the point where I would know she would say, I'd say, Chris, honey, daddy's on the phone. And then I'd hear you whimpering and they'd always, you know, you'd start to cry. You get so upset. And then, I'd always keep your dad on the phone for another minute because we just knew the routine. And then because what you were thinking of is how am I going to disguise this for my father? And you would come up with some kind of joke or some type of silly story that you made up and try in an effort to make him laugh. And, you know, that's how you'd be. And I don't even remember that as a kid. So it's like there's some deep, deep, deep pain that I have that I talk about my dad so much. There's some deep, insanely deep pain that I have about my father that I don't even know how to articulate yet. But it's in there because I was, as a child, hysterically crying. What are you? He just wasn't around? That was the issue? He was just, my parents were divorced and I was upset that my dad couldn't be in the house with me. It would remind me. I would get reminded every time he called, like, oh, shit, I miss my dad. Right. Because I then I would, you know, I'd go to sleep, wake up the next day and be a child and not think about him until he called me again that night. And I'd be like. I also got to say, I don't, not everybody needs to be deep, dude. Right. Like, right. you don't, maybe don't, I, as you're saying this, I'm like, I don't want you to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I yeah. really don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to fucking hear this shit. Like, yeah. just give me fucking funny maniac stories. Yeah. Just yeah. be a maniac. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's Maybe what that's I, my special maniac. Yeah, just be a fucking maniac. You maniac and you barely have oxygen. You fucking, yeah. like, fucking, you have all these, like, moves. Yeah. And you have, like, a, a voice or brand or whatever you want to call it. Just be that. Like, I don't fucking want you to be emo. Yeah. Like, I just be fucking, be be like a guy who's like trying to do the right thing. Like, that's why I like that good intentions, wrong move. Like, that's a good, Yeah, I can see that. Like, I know that. Right. Well, maybe it's too, I think like you, you didn't write that in a year blocks, right? I mean, that this takes time. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, I had a different story. Cause I saw you working with Jenga blocks in like 2018. You did? Yeah. Like, I feel like there was a bit, uh, there was one time, you know, uh, at uh, Zany Chicago, there's this guy, Brian, that works over there. And he was like, oh, I saw Neil working with Jenga blocks or some type of Jenga. No, no that's a Jenga joke about, about talking about trans issues. Oh, so he's, okay, so, so. I think he was talking about that. So bit. yeah. So Jenga style, he was saying like, you know, but I remember you talking something with jenga because when he said it that i'm bringing up him because when he I said did, it, i'm like the, i remember that i did the joke the, it's about talking about trans issues okay it's yeah, like, yeah yeah, yeah so, like so that's what it was jenga. so my mind yeah, yeah. i was like i know that i've heard neil talking yeah, about yeah. jenga stuff no i wrote the show in the show was sort of written in 2020 and the, i was supposed to start in 2020 right and couldn't and right. no one knows why yeah, but it's um, like, but it's it's still like a work of it's still like the, these things. Like everyone tries to get things out so quickly nowadays because they like I need more and more and more. But it's like I think like the ones that stick out the best are like, hey, it took some time. Yeah, to fucking let this yeah. breathe. What's the? I don't have. I don't. I, my jokes have to be perfect. That's like the downside of yeah. being low charisma. Is that? <laughs> is that? <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, my jokes have to be so good, or they just don't work? Right. They either work. Or they don't work. I can't fucking squeeze. I can't wink them out. Right. Like they have to be structurally so fucking sound. So I, I kind of have to work for a long time. Interesting. Um. The the with the COVID, I was thinking when you were saying I, about Dr. Fauci. I was on a dating app, and uh, a woman said she was open minded. Okay. Which I thought she meant she liked like you know gangbangs and stuff. And then, That's what I like, and right then away. she sends me a fucking Fauci documentary. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's what you meant by open minded. Yeah. I thought we were gonna like, you know, do some wild shit. <laughs> yeah. Turns out you just want you just want me to look at both sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Of science. Yeah. Um you gotta look at both sides. Of science? No, there's one side. Oh, you're not dating now, you're single now. I am single, yeah. But you would date like you would I would I was in love in February. Like it was fucking it's amazing. And it's then, fucking amazing. February, March. Right. <laughs> February uh, to March. Through full February, full March. Summer January, full February, full March. She didn't like the intimacy, Chrissy. Ooh. It was her. She didn't like the intimacy. She intim- didn't like the she didn't like it. She was like, You're the she actually said something hilarious. She goes, You're the most emotionally available guy I've ever dated, and I don't like it. Interesting. It was like upside down day where I was like, wait, what? I'm the, and you're the trying to, uh, yeah, we fell in love and she was like, we're fucked. Dude, could you imagine some of the other guys she dated before you? If you're the most emotionally available guy. I mean, monsters, the shutdown monsters. monsters. She dated everybody. Yeah. I mean, if I'm, if I'm the gold standard, fuck. No, but dude, but you've worked on yourself, man. You talk about the the therapy and then you have video evidence of it. It's fucking wild. Yeah. The video evidence is kind of rough, right? Yeah. Like, well, well, cause at first I was like, oh, this is going to get funny. And then I was like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Holy shit. The one in China. I was like, yeah. What the The fuck? The one in China. Yeah. The one in China is rough. The one in China. I was like, yo, but then with the beauty of the special again, within 30 30 seconds you're laughing again yeah but but that moment i remember while i was doing the dick because i was watching it on the phone i remember washing dishes wait, 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 what i'm kidding yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't sit out yeah um no i was watching and i was like i remember that china thing i was like there's got to be a bit here but then it was just your fa- just getting fucking destroyed by this chinese doctor i was like you <laughs> i was like damn bro getting popped getting yeah popped yeah but um but but yeah man beautiful do we we had a couple of questions from the fans v can you put that or mike yeah, okay. Uh, worst celebrity you've ever met and what's the story? Eh. Um, the special is... Oh, are you never returning to the pot? Big, this is from Peter Lara. Big Neil, first off. I'm going to do a different podcast. Okay. Here's... You'll like this. Okay. You'll like that. I'm doing that again. <laughs> 100%. You're going to really get a kick out of this. Um, I'm going to do... Jimmy Carr, the great British comedian, had an idea for a podcast, which is have other people on and a podcast and have them talk about their blocks. Okay. The things that make them feel isolated and crazy and like alone in the world, like the special. So, Oh my dude, I just realized that's why it's called blocks because you have emotional blocks. I thought it was just cause it was fucking blocks. Like I'm in, cause for me, you know I- what it- <laughs> When I saw the special, I was like, oh, I want to watch this because blocks. I like blocks. It helps. I'm learn- I yeah. learn with pop-up books. I literally was wondering, why is he not responding to this very good idea? They're nodding, and you're going like, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I literally, wow. Yeah. Man, Wait, what? Have you, have you never heard of a double entendre before? No. It's a double <laughs> I get by on charisma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, wow. Yeah, no, so but that's what that blocks. Du- yeah. So it's other people's blocks, but I got good people. We'll have you on. Yeah. I got good people. Yeah. Uh, don't get too emo because the people don't want that from you. Uh, just be a maniac. <laughs> okay. And uh, and so I'm going to start that soon. I'm just waiting. I'm, I just have to get, because I don't want to do a podcast every week because you see what it does to you. Um, True. But I'm already burning out. I want to do like a bunch of them and then st- like do 10 and then chill and then like do a another. season. Yeah. I've been saying this. Yeah. I've been saying this to for for the last but yours months. are more topical. This will be like right. evergreen, so to speak. And right. I got good people that are willing to do it. Yeah, you get big guests. Yeah, get bought out by fucking HelloFresh. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, HelloFresh. What were they just doing with Cook? They're Monk? great. They're great people. Oh, we love Hello. Yeah. We love HelloFresh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we love HelloFresh. Uh, uh, oh, if Chris could have played a role in the Chappelle Show, who would it be? Uh, uh, racist cop. Yeah, just a cop. Racist yeah. cop. Yeah, why not? <laughs> That's what the thing, Michael I think Che play the, wrote. For, yeah, you play that on Che's show. Yeah, Che, he, he literally texted me the night before, two nights before. He goes, I wrote, uh, exact text. He goes, I wrote a part for a racist cop. It's funny. I, there's no one more perfect than you. I was yeah. like, good. All right. Except Burr, but he wouldn't have done it. Yeah. It was, he yeah. did it. He would do it there's on no Chappelle show. There's no more perfect show. than you that I could afford. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that's what it is. That I can do travel for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's, that's uh, what is this? The overlapping pregnancies of Nick Cannon's 12th 
children. Is just a graph of Nick Cannon's tr- current children count. Right, with all different women, which he seems to like. They're pregnant at the same time here. Right, but there's no beef. Like, there's no women coming out of the woodwork being like, no. "Oh, fuck this guy." He's, blah, 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 he's blah. done it. He's done it the right way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and by the right way, I mean no condom. Mm-hmm. Bareback. Yes. And the episode right there. Um, this is no, the hey, uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe.